Okay, hello my friends. Here are a number of big stories that you want to be aware of of what's ha happening in Ukraine. As war costs mount, Russians increasingly dis uh, are disposing of fallen soldiers right at the front to claim them as missing rather than paying death compensation back to the families back home. This is pretty despicable, but here it is in the Kiev Post. If we go out to the actual article, we'll see this. We bury him right there, Russian on, uh, Russian on Moscow's tactics to avoid paying for fallen soldiers. Well, why would they do this? And how did they find this out? Okay, in a newly intercepted call by Ukraine's main intelligence directorate, it reveals that fallen Russian soldiers are simply buried on the battlefield to be categorized as missing. They kill them. The fighting goes on. It's hot. They start to smell. So we bury them right there. And then they, they're missing. And if they're missing, the families get no payment. Got it? That's how the man explains it. Now, it's more convenient, or rather cheaper, for the Russian Ministry of Defense to declare the dead missing. After all, compensation for each fallen Russian soldier in the war against Ukraine ranges from 7 to 12 million rubles, or 75,000 to 129,000 U.S. So that's what's going on. It's pretty sad, that, but that's the kind of immoral way that they're treating their own people, let alone Ukrainians. Okay, Russia produces 500 Shahi drones per month, as well as 90 to 115 cruise missiles and up to 56 ballistic missiles, according to Forbes Ukraine. So what does that mean? If we do the math, if we look at the math, that means if they're spending less than 16 uh, Shahids per day, and like today there was only four of them, if they're spending less than 16, they're building up a stock, an inventory, okay? That's 500 divided by 30. And same with the missiles. If they're using less than five missiles in any given day, they're building up a stock or an inventory. This is how many they actually Actually have the rate of missile production in Russia is 132 to 171 units per month according to this publication and in cost of 1.1 billion Shahid drones and they list through all of them Shahid's cruise missiles FAF 360 missiles KN 23s those kind of things okay so now you have an index just like four tanks per day is replacement cost now you know that it's about well 16 Shahids per day Okay, the Institute for the Study of War had this really interesting little bit. Um, Ukrainian Defense Minister Umarov stated on September 21st that Ukraine will increase its production of drones by several times in 2025 in order to maintain its uh, Ukraine's quantitative superiority over Russian drones. And they really do have a, a superiority. Um, they have taken leaps and bounds, but the Russians are also trying to do this as well. And if we look at what the Institute for the Study of War put here, they were talking about going from uh, Russian companies delivering from 140,000 drones to Russian forces in 2023 to production that increased tenfold to 1.4 million drones in 24. That was the goal at least. But then the Russians are doing stupid stuff like uh, field commanders, particularly those among units of the 51st Combined Arms Army, are also reportedly sending drone operators to conduct frontal assault assaults as punishment for dissent. So yeah, I, I think that's a good idea for the Russian army to be doing that, and they should keep it up. Okay. Uh, Yuri Anikov, a high-ranking commander of the Air Force Communication Center in Moscow, committed suicide um, after 20 years in the Air Force, and his note details his superior's criminal orders as the reason. The corruption is just, it's rife. It's, it's really startling. Now, this is not corruption within the Air Force, but it's it's a similar kind of uh, thing. Russian aviation is in disarray. Tupolev contracted by the state in 2022 to build 70 214 passenger jets by 2030. Kremlin paid Tupolev 450 million in 2023, but then Tupolev asked for it and got another 1 billion and then another 1 billion in 2024. Not a single plane has been built. Now, there could be an explanation for this that's just purely normal, where they just, they're securing the raw parts and they're designing the machines and whatever it is that they're doing, but it could also be part of that corruption narrative that has been pretty significant. Okay. So Russian Mi-8 helicopters set on fire on a military base in Omsk and the fascists arrested the two 16-year-old kids. So teenagers were destroying these. So they do. The military doesn't have to. Um, they've, got, they've been arrested for this. They're not going to be doing it again. But that's the kind of thing going on in Russia. Okay, remember what happened with Hezbollah and the pagers and all that. Well, now it's affecting Iran. And that's good for Ukraine because Iran helps Russia 
fairly significantly. The Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps has banned its members from using any communication devices following the bombings in Lebanon, Reuters reported. Also, the Ayatollah regime has begun a purge among high-ranking military officials to identify suspected Israeli agents. So they're really concerned in Iran. The Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps has ordered all members to halt any further use of personal communication devices, including cell phones, radios, and pagers, following last week's Israeli sabotage attacks against members of Hezbollah in Lebanon. A large operation is said to be underway to investigate every electronic device used by the RRGC and other military organizations in Iran. So they're really freaked out about it, and with good reason, they're freaked out about it. So. Okay, um, now turning our attention to economic issues, shutting down Russia's ability to export oil to India and other, uh, other countries is important to helping Ukraine achieve victory. So we thought we had done that, but then India is soaking up as much as they can. And when they soak it up, they just um, they refine it and then send it to the EU. And so it's really not helping because, well, here here's why. India's imports from Russia are up 900 percent versus pre-invasion. So they're going to profit from this. This is mostly crude that gets refined, shipped back to Europe. It'd be fine if it happened on Western-owned oil tankers in compliance with the G7 cap. So it's not even uh, like those that are capped. It's They're using the shadow fleet of vessels, and that all only helps Putin. If you look at this... Uh, it, I mean, this is just crazy. Uh, imports from Russia, that's the black line. And you notice the years, yeah, it's going up. And they got in that sweet, sweet Russian oil and they're profiting from it. And then they're selling it back to Europe. And it's it's really tragic to see. Similarly, Russia's exports to, uh, or sorry, China's exports to Russia uh, have doubled, going from $5 billion per pre invasion per month pre-invasion to $10 billion now. But that's not the full story. China sends so much stuff to Russia through Central Asia, and that's, so what they're sending to Russia is in red, and what they're sending to Central Asia is in blue, and then that blue is being sent over to Russia just through Central Asia. And so it's doing the same kind of thing. And that's, here's 2022, and you see it spike after that. Okay. President Zelensky visited the Scram Scranton Amp army ammunition plant where components for artillery and mortar shells are being produced including 155 millimeter shells for ukraine he emphasized the dedication of the workers which was truly inspiring telling them he's grateful to the people of scranton pennsylvania and all the states where americans are building this incredible arsenal of global freedom and you see him and some others also signing this um and it's it's pretty impressive what they're doing, but I'm sure that was a big shot in the arm for him to be visiting. They said 400 people work here. He said those 400 people have saved millions of Ukrainians. And yeah, I mean, I, I, it might be a little bit hyperbolic to say that they saved millions of Ukrainians, but they've been a part in saving hundreds of thousands of Ukrainians from great evil that would have befalled them. And there's Zelensky actually signing uh, the, that missile himself or that uh, munition himself. Okay, just because I enjoy this, there it is. This Lancet interceptions by FPV drones have gradually moved uh, from being a rare occurrence to being kind of a, a fairly normal thing. I see lots of these videos now, and, and, yeah, and yes, I watch them because I find them just fascinating. This drone-on-drone -drone warfare will be the way of the future, and it'll be drone-on-drones on, drones on the ground and drone-on-drones on drones in the air, and it's just things have changed. All right, my friends, that's all that I have. Thank you for your time. Thank you for the likes and the shares and the subscribes. And thank you for being the kind of person that cares about Ukraine.